we have two hours to go. The uh, the nerves are kind of setting in a little bit because I always heard, you know, like for your for your first eclipse, don't take pictures, just enjoy it. Well, I don't want to. I want to take pictures, damn it, and time lapses and make this exponentially harder than it has to be. start this again. Hello. April 7th, 2024. All the telescopes have been set up. The slider's set up. Uh, the other camera's been set up. Batteries are all charged. We got extension cords. We got chairs. We got computer uh, shade housing thingy from Amazon. Nervous, I guess. Uh, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things could go wrong. I don't know. I mean, I'll just wait and see how the experience goes. Uh, never seen a total solar eclipse before, so I'm super excited about that. I really didn't come and come set all this up with the game plan of what to say. I'm really just doing it to test the slider to make sure all the stuff works and all that crap. Because instead of a camera, I'm using the GoPro, so that's just one less thing to worry about for tomorrow. Really don't know what else to do. I haven't been in front of the camera in a while. So this is, uh, you know, you, it's usually pretty easy to, uh, to make a video based off of something you've already done or currently doing. I'm making a video on something that hasn't happened yet. So I really don't know what to expect. But anyway, I guess we'll see. Seven fifty one a.m. Everything's packed and loaded up, and we are on the way to Mount Vernon. A little nervous. There wasn't a cloud in the sky last night, and now it's looking it's not like overcast, just cloudy. Hopefully, it'll clear up whenever it gets uh, whenever it gets a little warmer outside. I can't think of anything I missed. Well, I can think of like three things I might have missed, but. Nothing we could do about that now. It's just weird, you know, because like whenever the the eclipse in 2017 happened, it's like, oh, the next one will be in 2024. It's like that's a, a lifetime away. Like, I mean, you know, somebody like me, I've shot the moon a lot. Shooting the moon's easy. The sun's the same size, but then there's just so much, so much extra stuff. And I'm putting a lot of it on myself too, like, you know, trying to do a time lapse up to time lapse like that's ridiculous <laughs> that's just a little extra but like you know somebody who doesn't get to travel the world to go see eclipses and especially this one being so close to home like i'm going all out there's gonna be thousands upon thousands of pictures of this there's gonna be hundreds upon hundreds of amazing work of art pictures but none of them will be mine like, if I'm going to get one of these things printed, it's going to be something that I took. And that adds a little bit of extra pressure. But it'll be fine. Everything's fine. We're going to head up the road to Mount Vernon. We'll uh, get the telescope set up. We'll get the slider set up. We'll get everything charged and running. And do a little, one more, you know, test shot of everything. And then, then it's just waiting. So we'll pick back up whenever we get everything situated out in the field. Bye-bye. It is 1017. I'm looking at the wrong part of the camera. There we go. 1017. So we got two hours and 15 minutes uh, until first contact starts. <clears throat> we got GoPro for a time lapse. We got the telescope set up, balanced, 
batteries charged, laptops charged. Had to go to Walmart last night and buy a new damn uh, external hard drive. <laughs> I was doing the, the math. I'm like, okay, so if each capture is this, and I'm going to take this many captures because the eclipse is this long, then it's going to be a terabyte. Well, the last remaining external hard drive I had had like 864 gigabytes of storage left. So about one of the only manual things I'm going to have to do, well, two manual things I have to do. One is just to make sure the telescope stays tracked because, you know, AVX, nah. But as I take pictures or as I take video captures, they're going to be, hell, I don't remember, two gigabytes a piece or something like that. Anyway, I did a whole bunch of testing last night and I found out that if I do five second captures, that should be about 475 frames which isn't ideal, but you know, we work with what we got. And that should give me enough buffer to capture, you know, 50 or so sequences, maybe 25 to play it safe, capture like 25 sequences and then start transferring them to the external hard drive so I can delete those 25 sequences off of the laptop. And I know you might be asking, well, why don't you just write to the external hard drive? Well, you can, but it doesn't write fast enough so then the computer lags. So that ain't gonna happen. I've got to try to get my nerves calmed down. And then here in a little bit, I'll be aligning the scopes and we'll just go from there. I guess I should probably take the time to go over exactly what the hell I'm doing here. We got the Coronado 60. I was going to use the Player One Neptune M because it's better paired with the 60, but just as a CYA, I went with the Apollo M Max because it has a much wider field of view and gives me a little bit more breathing room throughout this whole thing. And then you can see the dual saddle plate, ADM, of course, it works great. We got an AR-152, which is also secondhand because I'm cheap. The Explore Scientific, this thing is massive, but it works great. And then we got a Nikon Z6 Mark II back here in the back just chilling way back here in the back we just got a camera sitting over here by itself chilling but the whole purpose of this camera is to get one shot and that shot is going to be when the eclipse sun is over here and you got jupiter and uranus and the other planets all right there don't let me down buddy and then over here we got the GoPro set up. I couldn't even tell you how many videos I watched. But we got the GoPro set up with an external battery pack. So this son bitch ain't gonna run out of battery. We got the Edelkron slider set up with external batteries. And so what this is gonna do, it's gonna take a four hour time lapse starting at 11.45, right about here. And then it's gonna come over here and then boom a clip shot and then over here to the end so we'll start at 11 45 and run to 3 45. and with two hours to go the uh the nerves are kind of setting in a little bit because i always heard you know like for your for your first eclipse don't take pictures just enjoy it well I don't want to. I want to take pictures, damn it, and time lapses and make this exponentially harder than it has to be. It's almost like fail safe after fail safe. Like, okay, something happens with one of the telescopes or the camera runs out of battery or this happens. Well, there's a time lapse. And then if something happens there, well, at least there's a picture. And then if all that fails, well, I got a cell phone. <sighs> okay, get off here now, save battery. 15 minutes till this shindig starts. We got clouds, <clears throat> so I'm trying to set the scope up so it doesn't have to do a meridian flip. So I set the time on the mount to like 8.30, loosened the clutches, moved it over here. Now all I gotta do is get it lined up, but I can't get it lined up because there's no sun. And I think the focus on the hydrogen alpha camera is good. So literally all I just have to do is this, waiting for that patch of clouds to move. Can play a 
This is going on YouTube. Say hi. God. <laughs> Look at this. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, it's fixing to close up. It's nice. Nice. I don't There is no words to describe <laughs> what that looked like. And I'll tell you what, I know time is relative and all that. Four minutes is like an eternity when you're like jogging or doing something like that. That four minutes of totality seemed like 30 seconds. It was just so fast. Of course, when you have as much shit out here as I do, you know, it goes by really fast because it's like bump up exposure to catch prominences, take the filter off the, the white light filter off the big telescope, make sure the moon and the sun are in the GoPro and then come back over here to the other camera and I like try to get the wide view and see if you can see the comet like, and then by that time it was like, oh, it's getting bright again, just so fast. Now starts the tedious process of packing all this shit up. I don't know, I might be hooked. <laughs> that, was, that was insanity. And then getting to share it with other people, you know, that was, that was pretty sweet too. Everybody should experience that once, twice, five, ten times in their life. Man. Anyway, well, I hope y'all enjoyed this party. There's Wrigley. Everybody say hi to Wrigley. Wrigley. <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, see y'all later. <laughs>